Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Nick here. Uh, another video, just wanting to keep you up to date with some changes that are happening in Google. So I want to keep you guys on the front foot so you're always ahead of the game and you're well aware of changes as they come, okay? Now, most of these changes are either being implemented very soon or have recently been implemented. And they're not huge, but what I'm seeing is there's a bit of a push towards automation, okay? And letting Google run a lot more things for you, which... Give, I'm a bit cautious about, okay? Now, guys, before we get into the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're the first to know of any new videos I drop. Dropping lots more content. I'm trying to get to almost daily videos. Obviously, this is the second one for the week. So, yeah, guys, I'm going to try and be far more consistent and give you guys lots and lots of value, okay? So, let's get into it. So, the first change, guys, that it's probably one of the ones that actually has me the most feeling a little bit uneasy Accelerated delivery is being removed, okay? Now, it has been postponed about 20 days, so till early October, but this one basically means that standard delivery is gonna be the only method available, okay? It's the only delivery method that's good. Now, what I liked about accelerated delivery is it allowed for much, much more aggressive bidding, and basically it told me that, okay, if my budget's being used up early in the day, I can keep increasing that budget, and it pushed me further up in the auction and further up in the ranks, because I had that turned on, okay? Now, standard smooths out your budget a lot more. And look, guys, there's not to say, it's not to say that it's a terrible change. It's been a very, very common practice for e-commerce stores to use this, particularly in Google Shopping, okay? So it's very much a Google Shopping-centric thing. A lot of people would use Accelerated to bid more aggressively, okay? And basically, it was a really easy way of knowing that, you know, you can continue to scale and you can keep having your product shown ahead of others, okay? It was just a very, very nice uh, setting for us in e-commerce. Now, why was it done? As I said, there's a trend of Google forcing us to use their automated bidding strategies and utilizing their AI. They've got a lot of data now, so I'm a bit more comfortable than if they were to do this, say, a few years ago. But guys, it's basically to stop what I said. So it's to stop people forcing their way to the top of the auction and making us more focused on the end user and what they're searching. So titles, descriptions are going to be a lot more important now, as is the negative keywords. Okay. So all those things together, Google wants to make sure that whatever the person is searching for, we're putting the right thing in front of them and not just outbidding other people. Okay. So now the actions for this, this is how I've broken the whole video down. Actions now, watch the impression share metrics, guys. So watch your lost impression share due to all different things. And that's what's gonna tell you to bid more aggressively. So if your ad rank is low, you're losing impressions due to ad rank, you can afford to increase your bids, you can improve your titles, and you can improve your descriptions, okay? And even your price and just overall, change the image, Go through the optimization videos that I've done. I'll leave the links below. Now, another way to get around this, guys, and what I will be doing is setting up ad schedule bid adjustments. So if I know that at 6 p.m. on a Wednesday, I get more conversions, I'm going to increase my bids there 20% or something, right? So go through your data, dig into your analytics, dig into your Google Ads data, and find out when you're getting the most conversions and try and come up with a bidding strategy there where you can bid more aggressively. You can also set up some scripts to do that if you need, or you can do it manually. But basically, guys, they're the ways that you're now going to need to adapt. Now, if you weren't using this before, then you've got no issue. If you're currently using it, I suggest either just waiting and letting it switch over or switch it over. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But if you switch it over now and you can get used to it, it's probably not a bad idea. I've started switching some of my accounts across. Now, the second change, and this really, really impacts search, but I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but what I've seen is broad match, modifier, broad match. That it's now bringing in so many search terms that are somewhat unrelated, okay? So now Google is pretty good at knowing when someone's searching for something, whether or not it's related to what you've got in your keywords. So match types on your keywords are becoming less and less relevant now. So you're gonna come up for less relevant terms in search, so especially now for, so this was already active for exact match uh, and broad match from memory, but now this is extended to broad match modifier and phrase match. Now, I do suggest you go and read Google's info on this. It is a bit hard to explain, but basically for broad match modifier, if you had plus 
lawn plus mowing plus servers. That in essence meant that those three words had to be in there, okay? And so it would be services to mow my lawn. Now, mow and mowing interchangeable, Google knows that. That's what I'm saying, it's getting worse and worse. Now, grass cutting and gardening services, if that comes up, if, if someone searched that term, your search is also gonna turn up. Now, what's the issue with that? If you're a lawnmower and you're only mowing lawns, then you might not offer gardening services. So it's actually getting very, very tricky. And I've got a feeling that Google's doing this to improve their earnings because they're gonna get a much, much, much higher amount of clicks from ads. They're giving more space to ads within their search engine. And basically, guys, I think this is gonna improve their revenue, okay? That's what it's, it's going to do. Now, the actions, you need to go and read this stuff. You need to wrap your head around it. It's very boring for me to teach, it's hard. I'm still wrapping my head around it and how to come up with strategies. It is a bit of a case by case basis and learning how to improve. But guys, you know, you really don't wanna be coming up for things that are gonna be irrelevant. Now, rates for, for services that cut your grass, that person isn't exactly ready to buy yet. But lawn mowing and edging service, that person was far more likely to buy, okay? Now, rates, yeah, someone's looking and they're just comparing prices, but this could have, in my eyes, this would have led to a conversion, was far more likely to lead to a conversion than this, okay? Now, just be very, very careful with shopping with your titles and descriptions now. And make sure you're watching negative keywords like a hawk, okay? I can't stress that enough. So number three, the average position metric is disappearing. I really liked it, but obviously the impact is obvious. That metric's no longer gonna be available very, very soon. I think in some accounts, it's already gone. So the actions, keep an eye on your lost impression share, okay, due to rank. What you can then do, as I said above, go through my optimization process, go through, tidy up everything, and slowly improve that ad rank. Just keep in mind, guys, that improving your ad rank, your quality score, it takes time and it's not a overnight success kind of a thing, okay? The more you can match someone's search to your ad and vice versa and to your landing page, the more likely you are to lead to a conversion. So this isn't diabolical. You can find a way around it, guys. Just use the search loss impression share metric and that's gonna give you a pretty good indication as to where you're ranking. If it's really, really high, then obviously your average position would have also been high. So number four, seasonal adjustments for smart bidding. Probably not a huge one for a lot of people, but what I like about it, guys, is it gives you a bit more control with automated bidding strategies, okay? So these smart bidding strategies, they they tend to remove a lot of the control, but guys, this right here is gonna give you a bit more of that control. So you can set up seasonal adjustments during Christmas, Black Friday, winter, summer, depending on your type of store, and basically you can up or lower your bids, okay? So, which is really, really good because obviously the AI isn't great at knowing that. And it isn't great at knowing without forcing huge amounts of long-term data into it. It isn't great at knowing when someone has a really, really crazy period. And if you can't increase those bids and bid more aggressively, then you're gonna miss out on a lot of sales. Similar to the accelerated delivery, okay? This is giving you back that controller. So, very, very cool. I'm gonna do a little bit of playing around with it and I hope you do as well. So. The next one, guys, just a little bit of an FYI, gallery ads. So these are launching later this year, but what I think is awesome is it adds a picture element, which is what the other social platforms are good for. Search wasn't great for visually portraying your images. Maps is growing massively, and this will grow massively as well. So Maps ads are now coming up in Google Maps. If you're navigating somewhere, you can have a little ad pop up for, you know, if you're near a Best Buy, or a Walmart and they're doing an ad on Google Maps specifically, it's coming up. So things are going to a lot more visual, a lot more interactive now. Obviously this person selling frozen meals here, you can slide through like a slider, have a look at the images and decide whether or not to click it. So you are gonna get far more qualified traffic coming through guys with these types of ads. When they're launched, I'll do a video dedicated to them, but I'm very excited for these. And I think they're gonna be fantastic for e-commerce, yeah? Great for e-commerce, great for all types of services as well. Now guys, this was literally just a really, really quick video to get you up to scratch with everything. Now, I know a lot of people are asking me what's the difference between my free course and my paid course. In short, I'll do a video, but in short, the free course is designed to get you your first sale and just get you set up with basic settings in Google Ads. The advanced course is gonna take you through search. It's gonna take you through shopping. It's gonna take you through display YouTube to a far higher 
level. It's far higher than even what Google teaches and what a lot of other people teach. With that knowledge, you can go on out and build campaigns for virtually anyone in e-commerce. And if you wanna go out and do it for businesses, you can. If you wanna do it for your store, it's designed for you to be able to scale your store to six figures and beyond, okay? So five figures, six figures and beyond. That's in essence the major difference. And obviously the group is where I'm dropping a lot of knowledge in there. I'm doing regular lives in there and that's who is getting most of my attention. If you jump in now, there's a lot less people in there. We've probably got 13 people in there at the moment. I said for 25 people, I'm gonna leave the price at 297. Jump in before that if you want, guys. Otherwise, I am gonna put it up. I don't want a lot of people in there because I wanna give people lots of attention in there to help them grow from just getting a few sales to growing, okay? So Jonathan, he has already found a product where he's doing regular sales and he's already done more than 3,000 with it, okay? Now, I really wanna help you. Jump in there, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you've enjoyed the video, okay? Talk to you soon.